Hello everybody and welcome to Uprising 144K. I'm Hydrogen Man, guys. So before I begin, as usual, I'm not giving you any medical advice. Don't forget to support the channel by giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell. Now, I highly suggest to watch the whole video today because I actually have some super interesting and very important information that I'm going to be sharing throughout the video all the way till the end, even information that I myself did not know. And I learned a lot by doing research on this particular product. I've had a lot of people asking questions about this device. So I finally decided to do some deep research and I've got all sorts of amazing answers for you today. So let's go ahead and get started. This is so interesting, guys. First of all, this is a portable hydrogen machine. Uh, one of the things that they claim when you look through here is superior to the Lourdes Hydrofix, the best machine in the world, right? And if you want the simple answer, if you don't want to watch the whole video, is it superior to it? Not even close. I mean, it's like not even, it's no contest. It's literally like comparing a Ferrari to a Ford Focus or Ford Festiva or something. But let me explain why. That's the more important part. First of all, this company is literally so scared to let you know that these parts are made in China and and or Korea because literally on the label it says, hey, they were distributed from California. They don't want to put anywhere on this bottle that it's made in China. This is interesting. The more I read about the product and their knowledge, I, it was very apparent to me that they lack a lot of knowledge when it comes to hydrogen. Um, they're talking about, for example, the ORP. Um, you don't really ever want to measure ORP when it comes to something like hydrogen because that number can be highly manipulated. You really want to look at the hydrogen content. Then they're also using uh, PPB, which is fine. It's more of a way to try to overinflate the number by making it look real big. But it, you really should just be doing the PPM technically. But that's not a huge deal. That wasn't the, the big problem with this product as I was researching it. I contacted many different distributors of the product, which is so hilarious because every answer they gave me was different than the other. Some told me that the parts were made in Korea. Other places told me the parts were made in China. And then of course, they really like to say that it was made in the US. And so, but none of, literally, uh, neither China nor Korea has proper metal technology for such things. In fact, there's probably only three countries in the world that have the proper metal technology to make the proper hydrogen device. And that's Germany, the United States, and Japan. That's it, guys. Now, the US and Germany are not really into making hydrogen devices. The only company or country that's really gone out of their way to make the proper metal for a hydrogen device is Japan which obviously is the one that, that I use. This is the Lourdes Hydrofix, the one they're trying to compare it to. In fact, they even tried to copy the name, the Hydro Lux. That's eh, kind of funny and kind of interesting, but that's not what's really important here. Let's first talk about the hydrogen concentrations because this is where you're gonna learn something super interesting that I also learned. Just because the number is higher, does that mean it's better? Actually not. What I ended up finding out is that the hydrogen that this is producing, because of the way it produces it, is not going to be that bioavailable to your body. And that's going to be a really big problem. Why is it not bioavailable? Well, this is what's going on. So they're using a cap to pressurize the bottle, which they say, oh, it's patented, which it's a little bit laughable because, you know, making a cap that makes a seal is, I don't know how you patent that. But anyway, so there's their secret patent. But anyway, when it's making hydrogen under pressure, it makes it really fast, guys. I mean, I think it only takes four minutes. Granted, the bottle is small, and that's also going to be a problem because you don't make a lot of water, which, you know, the, I know the numbers look up, you know, they, they look really good because they're inflated, but that's not really the issue here. When you pressurize the bottle, I had to literally contact engineers to figure all this out. It was a little complex to understand. And I'm gonna simplify it for you here. When you pressurize the hydrogen, yes, you make it quickly, but the hydrogen will actually be unstable. You also have to understand that this is being directly electrolyzed, but that's besides the point. We'll get into that in a second. So when you pressurize it and it's not stable, the moment you pop that cap and you try to drink it, the hydrogen's not really gonna stay within this water very long at all. And that's gonna be a problem because when you drink it, into your body, again, the hydrogen doesn't really stay in the water, so it's not fully dissolved in the water really, really well, which means it can't be driven deep within your body. So apparently the Japanese already knew this. That's why when they produced, you know, this, the number one device there is right now in regards to hydrogen, they did not pressurize the cap on purpose. They literally did it on purpose. Yeah, they could have pressurized it and gone for the big numbers and all that, but what they actually chose to do, it's actually the harder way of doing it, 
It takes longer to dissolve the water, but it's much more stable so it can be driven deep within the body and the hydrogen stay within the water and you actually end up getting better results. And I've actually observed that. I've known people who get these type of portable bottles and they just don't get the results and that's actually why. So a big number is not really what you want. You really want stable hydrogen. Plus you want the nanotechnology. Nobody has nanotechnology as far as making the nano bubbles like the Hydrofix. It's something they worked really, really hard on and no company out there does that at this time. So that was really one of the big drawbacks in regards to the device. Obviously, the metal technology is one of the other drawbacks. They like to say, hey, um, this doesn't produce any toxins or anything. Well, of course, they're probably going to tell you that. And I'm sure they've watched my videos, which is why everybody you know, tries to write that down these days. But you have to look at the actual science of it. So you're using you know, metals from, the, from China or Korea. You're directly electrolyzing the water. It's actually basic chemistry. Now, the other issue is everybody's been trying to copy the Hydrofix in regards to just slapping on a little thing up here on the top so you can do the inhalation. The, here's the problem, and this is where the lack of knowledge on most companies and countries who are building those devices have. They just don't have the knowledge. Basically, inhaling the gas from directly electrolyzed water is a bad idea. That's why when the Japanese developed this guy, this is not directly electrolyzed, and they had to develop this part of the device in order to make the inhalation safe. Because there used to be an old model of these that were made in Korea, which I used to use because that was really all there was back in the day that was good, but those didn't offer inhalation either because it wasn't safe. Eventually, they tried to copy and put a top on them also, but it's not a good idea. We're talking about safety and also for it to be effective. And those two things are important because you got to use hydrogen regularly if you want to get the benefits. And you do, you're not going to want to inhale this regularly. I wouldn't even want to drink this water regularly. So those are some of the fundamental issues. Beyond that, you know, it has a glass, couple layers on it. I mean, that's fine. One of the other things that I've noticed about these, especially with the ones with the built-in battery, they just tend to have certain issues. You can't, as far as reliability, you cannot just run these devices 24-7. Uh, most of these portable bottles, if you do that, you're just going to burn them out. Um, in fact, there's a lot of devices that you cannot run just 24-7. Even the old model of the Hydrofix, you could only run for 30 minutes, and then you had to give it something like a 10 or 15 minute break. However, these newer ones, the Japanese ones, they found a way to make them super robust, super reliable, and you can run them 24-7 and it's safe, it's fine, uh, there's no issue. Plus, the container on these are way bigger, so you're making a lot more hydrogen, actually, where these, what they're focusing on is making them smaller and pressurized just to get that big number like, oh, it's got 3,000 ppb, but that's not really, you're not actually have that many milligrams of bioavailable hydrogen um, in that bottle, where here you actually have a lot more milligrams. So it's really, really deceiving. And it's really difficult for most people to understand. Even I had to do research on this subject in order to really learn all about it. So I really hope that this kind of answered everybody's questions out there. I think that was everything. I mean, I think I went through everything that they pretty much talked about here. And that was it, guys. So I hope that answered everybody's questions who had questions about this device. Don't forget to support the channel by giving the thumbs up and subscribing. I really, really hope it was informative. It was so informative to me to learn about this pressurization. I did not know that once you pressurize it, you really lose that bioavailability. Uh, bioavailability and that's super important you know I just can't emphasize it enough and that's I think why I've learned and realized why something like this gives better results as compared to something like this I just figured it all be hydrogen and it shouldn't matter too much but it does matter and so okay guys hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time on the next one